Hi everyone, it's Raquel here. In today's video, I'm going to be planning for the Moedim of 2020. I'm gonna be looking at my calendar, writing in some dates of the different holy days, and I thought I would show you how I plan for the holy days, what I include, what my thought process is. I'm also gonna be following up this video with a financial planning video about how I financially prepare for the holy days. So make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are on so you don't miss that video that will be coming out later this week, Lord willing. But in this video, I'm going to just show you what it looks like for me to actually sit down and make a plan for the holy days. This is a really general planning. So don't worry if you're not a natural planner, we are not going to be writing out every single detail and an invite list or anything like that in this video. We're just going to be doing some very general planning and setting some reminders so that as we get closer to these dates, we can start to make more detailed plans. But I really like setting these general plans in place because it's going to help me to be on top of the appointed times and really make the most of them for my family, for my children, for my community. It's going to help me to be wise with my finances so that I'm not surprised when things come up. It's going to help me just to know when these holy days are. I mean, even if you're not following the Hebrew Jewish calendar, you're following another calendar that perhaps you don't know the exact date um, you're still going to be able to kind of get an idea of where exactly Passover is, for example. Is it in March? Is it in April? You'll be able to get an idea for that in this planning session. So I hope that you will enjoy this video. Before we get into it, though, I do want to invite you to subscribe and welcome you to this channel. If you're new here, if you're not new here, welcome everyone. I am so thankful to be able to share with you how my family enthusiastically and practically lives out God's word in our heart, home, and family. So let's get into this planning and let me show you how I plan for the holy days of 2020. Hi everyone, it's Raquel here. So I have my favorite tea, all hot and steamy. It's Royabus tea, it's my favorite. Um, and so I have that here for me to just sip on as I plan. And then I have a monthly planner for the year 2020. I picked up this one from the Dollar Tree, so it's you know very inexpensive. It's not cute necessarily, but it's gonna serve a function and a purpose. You need to have the entire January to December 2020 planner. Um, because if you get the student planner, you're going to miss out on planning those fall appointed times. So you want the whole year. And then I personally like to have a separate planner for my, you know, monthly and annual things. I do not like to put, you know, the appointed times, for example, into my day-to-day -day planner because my day-to-day -day planner is just absolutely full of, you know, day-to-day -day things. I'm a very busy wife and mother and homemaker and YouTuber. And so that planner is just so full of stuff already that's happening on the day-to-day. -day. I like having a monthly planner that's going to allow me to still plan out these things that happen less frequently, like the appointed times. Now, as I am writing everything down in this hard copy, um, because I like to write things, it helps me to process and to think a little bit more clearly, then I'm going to also put them into the family calendar that my husband and I share digitally on our phones. We're using an Apple calendar, but you can use Google, Google calendars. Um, just be careful of your privacy. But, you know, you can use whatever type of calendar you like digitally as well. I just like to do both. Um, this one is for me, and this one is for me to kind of share everything I've thought with my husband in a very concise way where he doesn't have to, you know, think about what we're going to do for Passover, he just knows like, oh, okay, we're going to have an extra Passover this year and it's going to happen on this date. You know, so he gets the, you know, the clear cut plan that I've already made. Um, so planning digitally is really important for me too. The first thing that I do when I'm going to plan for the Moedim of 2020 is I get all the dates that I need. And I cheated because I didn't want this video to be super long. And I went to, um, hebcal.com. I wrote down all the dates that I need. You can also go there. Um, one thing to make note of is that it is for the Hebrew Jewish calendar. If you're not using that calendar, obviously this is not going to necessarily work for you. Um, you're going to have different dates that you're using. Now one thing to consider when you're looking at any calendar, but also you know with this hebcal.com, is that they are not necessarily telling you that this needs to go from sunset to sunset. You need to be aware of that with whatever calendar you're using, that they 
may do that. They may already tell you from sunset to sunset. They may not. They may just tell you the actual day of. That's really important when you're going to be looking at Sabbaths. So because, you know, Sabbath, if it's going to start the evening before, you might need to take off work. You might need to make some adjustments for that or whatnot. So just be aware of that whenever you look at a calendar and you're ready to input those dates into your own planner, whether it's hard, hard copy or whether it is digital. And I'm doing both. Now that all that has been said, we're ready to actually get into the planning. For the appointed times, I also want to think of a theme or I want to think of a word that's going to, you know, kind of piece together and give me focus for the year as I'm planning these holy days. The word that I have come up with is connected. And what I mean by connected is that I want to make connections with my family and with my community this year through the appointed times. I want to make connections with the scriptural text and really understand, you know, how all of the scriptures coherently tell us a message. And I want to be connected to my God through prayer and talking with him this year during the appointed times. Um, usually our appointed times um, celebrations are super, super word-based, but this year to incorporate a lot more prayer as well. So my word is connected. Then I'm going to actually start to write in the dates for each appointed time. Now, your appointed times might be different than my appointed times. I am actually going to be going off of Numbers chapter 28 and 29, the monthly appointed time where, you know, the beginning of Shavat, the beginning of Adar, the beginning of Nisan or Bev. I want to include all of those in here because my husband and I have decided this year that we're going to do something special to recognize the month, um, the Hebrew month. Okay, so for January 2020, all that's going to be happening this month is that the Hebrew month of Shavat is going to occur. Now that I have that written on my hard copy, I'm going to input it into my digital copy. My husband's going to get a reminder that, hey, this month is starting on this day. And so that's a great way to stay connected with him where he's in the loop. And then the next part of my process is in this notes section, I'm going to just jot down any ideas that I have for this month. I think that's good for now. That's all I can think of right now. And I just want to encourage you that if you're just writing these notes, this is just to like, like blah, all of your ideas out on paper. You don't have to stick to these things. It doesn't have to be super detailed. You're going to come up with more things later. It's just a place to write it down, you know, as opposed to writing some ideas here and then, oh, I'm going to write some random ideas here on this piece of paper. Or then, oh, I'm going to write some ideas here on my phone. And your ideas are just everywhere. You know, instead, all of my ideas are right here. And I'm going to be able to find them when the time comes because I'm putting a reminder in my phone um, probably like, you know, three weeks before for Shabbat. But like, I'm not going to do that here now. I'm not going to write the digital. So moving on for the month of February, we have a dar. I'm just going to write a dar dinner party here. And then again, I'm going to put this in my calendar, set a reminder so that I can make sure and plan something. One thing I will say before I move on is that, you know, like if you have something that's going to happen multiple times a year, it's really helpful to make some type of routine, some type of system. Every month we're going to have, you know, booklets that are going to be for that um, monthly Moedim dinner party. And the only thing that will change though is that scripture that connects to that month. So, um, so I'll just write a dar dinner party and I'll know to like, oh yeah, we're going to use the booklets, right? Which I haven't made yet. And <laughs> let me know in the comments if you would like to see what I put together for the monthly Moedim. Um, for March, we have something going on. Yay. Um, you may not choose to celebrate Purim, but we do celebrate Purim in our family. And so I'm going to write down on Monday the 9th, Purim. And then also happening in March, we have Nissan or a B. And so I'm just going to continue going like this. The next one, April, we have Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and ER happening. So I'm going to input those dates on my hard copy. I'm going to put it into my phone, set reminders a month ahead of time, put down some notes of different things, just mind dumping different ideas that I have for how we're going to celebrate that day. Now, Passover is a pretty common, you know, high holiday. So it is in this calendar, but I still like to write it myself because it starts on the 8th 
actually technically the eighth is like the meal at evening that is the Passover that is Passover but the word Passover has come to mean a lot of different things and so this is the first day of unleavened bread and then it's going to continue going until the 16th at sunset now it's also important here to note what are Sabbath as you're going. I put a little star here to let me know that this is a Sabbath day that my husband's going to need to take off from work um, from this sunset because I'm not sure what sunset, what time is sunset, so he can't work past that time. So we'll have to figure that out. And then um, this is a this is a Sabbath, and then again we have sunset on the 15th to the 16th is a Sabbath as well. So this is going to be really important for financial planning, which I'll talk about in the next video. But at least I have that down. You do your own system. Whatever's going to be helpful for you to know what are Sabbath. Now also with Passover, I'm going to be having a Passover with our congregation, which is likely going to happen on this day at sunset, the 8th of April at sunset we're gonna have our community Passover that's just pretty much guaranteed but I while I love the inclusiveness of a congregation and community Passover I also love the intimacy of a family and home Passover so we're going to actually have a family Passover on the 22nd or I'm sorry not 22nd on the 7th and this is going to be at sunset, you know, when my husband gets off work, I know it's not the actual day of Passover. It's just something that we're going to do as an intimate thing. Um, and then we'll, again, celebrate Passover the following day on the day of. I'm going to put a reminder in my phone for this family Passover. And I'm going to put a reminder in my phone for this Passover. Both of them are going to get a reminder because both of them require me to do something. Um, also, you know, when I do this plan for Passover, I need to also remember that I need to have all the bread out of my house that has hamatz, that has leaven. I need to get it out of my house. So, you know, before this happens, I'm going to set a reminder for, let's say, like March 7th or 8th or so. I'm going to have a notification come up on my phone for March 8th saying, get all the hamatz out of the house. I'm going to start working on that going to be part of my cleaning routine um, until we get to this point. That way I'm not wasting food, you know, like on the 7th. I'm like, oh no, Passover's coming up. I need to throw all the hamats out of my house. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And, you know, I have all this bread and donuts and <laughs> whatever in my house. I don't want to waste food. So I'm going to set that reminder a month ahead of time. So that way it comes up on my phone. I get the notification. I know, okay, time to start using up all the bread. Time to start, you know, making more tortillas and putting those in the refrigerator and things like that. Are you getting my drift here? I'm writing all the dates in. I'm also looking at the reminders I need to set, putting these dates and reminders into my phone. I am writing down notes of ideas, Passover. And again, I'm going to add to this as I continue to think about it just throughout all my different days. I have a place where I have written it down. So then we'll move on to May. And again, we're going to follow the same process. All right, I am kind of all done. Uh, planning for the Moedim for 2020. I say kind of because honestly I noticed that as I was writing in my book it was really hard for me to focus with the camera running. So I'm gonna have to go back in real life and finish you know making my plans and kind of brainstorming like mind dumping the ideas for the different Moedim. Um, but I at least wrote down the dates and at least I got to share with you how I normally would go through and plan. Again to recap my first thing to do is to get a theme or a word that I want to really connect all of the appointed times together. This is usually something that I have really thought about, meditated on, prayed about. And then the second thing I do is I write all those dates down in my hard copy planner as well as put them into my phone so that my husband and I are both going to get reminders on that exact date that they have come around. 
Then I'm going to put reminders in my phone for things like getting the hamats out of my house a month early. I'm going to put a reminder in my phone, let's say two weeks before the beginning of a Hebrew month. That way I just know like, okay, I need to buy some special foods for our Hebrew calendar dinner party. Um, and then after I set those reminders, I'm going to just, and I've written them down in my calendar, I am just going to like dump all the ideas that are in my head down on paper um, into that little notes section. That way I have one place that I can go back to, you know, as I'm just working and washing some dishes and I get this random idea like, oh, I want to sing the Hebrew calendar song at our monthly Moedim dinner party which I didn't write down because I just thought of it, and then, okay, I'm going to go back there to that same place. I'm going to put it down. I'm not going to have ideas strewn all over the place and getting lost, and I'm going to know where to go for those ideas. That way, as the, I get these reminders, like, okay, plan Passover. Okay, plan the month of Adar. Okay, plan this. Then I can go to those ideas that I've just dumped as they've come to me and then start to form some more detailed plans and get a better idea of what we're going to actually do, you know, step by step. I can get all those ideas and then create something that's going to be really meaningful to my family and, and a blessing to us in our walk with God. I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you enjoyed it. Please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you plan for the holy days or if you're going to start planning. Are you going to try this out? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video about financially preparing for the appointed times of 2020. God bless you and keep you. I'm going to talk to you later. Bye-bye.